Well, hello folks. Today I've got a new toy. It is a Ankyo single cassette deck recorder, which I got at a local thrift store for the entire price, the whole price of free. It's in nice shape and I just couldn't pass it up. And so I grabbed it, brought it home. It's a little bit dusty, but not too bad. So let's see what happens if I turn it on. Okay, so it looks like I've got a display. That's really nice. So that's telling me maybe the electronics are doing okay. So I think the next thing to do is try to tape and see what happens. So I've got some Obscure 80s new waves hits here. Now I don't have, oops, it's reverse mode, eject. I don't have uh, speakers hooked up, but at least we can see what happens if I put a tape in. Okay, so I don't see any changes in the display at all, uh, but let's see if I can rewind it. Okay, so it just makes a noise and it stops, it's not rewinding. Um, so let's take a look at the tape. This is uh, Locke. He's uh, tired. He's bored of this. He wants to go upstairs. We're in the basement studio. So let's take a look at our tape. That looks pretty good. Let's try... Okay, we can't... Can't fast forward. We can't rewind. How about a play? Well, it's doing something. Oh, yeah, it just stopped. Okay, stop it. Let's take a look. All right, so it looks like it's wrinkling up my tape a little bit. They don't want to ruin it. So I think what's happening here is uh, parts of it are turning down in here, but not all of it. So don't think I'm getting this to turn. Yeah, it's all loose up in here now. So I'm going to uh, take this apart. So I think that it's probably just belts. So I'm going to take it apart and see what the belts look like. But not bad. Not a bad start. Let's get this thing spun around. Take a look. What we got. All right. So we got our standard line in, line outs. Um, one thing I found with mo more modern receivers is they no longer have the connections to do uh, tape decks. So you can't go um, from the receiver to the tape deck and then back out to the receiver. So that kind of stinks with new equipment. So tape decks are kind of a thing of the past. Um, let's see here. Uh, looks like I'm missing one of the screws here. It looks like some people have been trying to fix it maybe. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, we got um, and, uh, remote controls. Uh, this I don't know much about these Ankyo remote control things. I think they probably plug from one device to the next, but not sure how that works. So this is a uh, model number TAR440. Don't know what that means. Um, it's manufactured in Malaysia, not Japan. Um, and let's see here. That's about it. I got the serial number. Nothing too fancy. Um, I guess I'll unplug this before I do completely take it apart, but yeah, maybe not. We'll just play with it. All right, so let's take off my screws on the side. Okay, let's open it up, see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so this is the inside of the deck. As you can see, it's pretty compact, mostly just empty, empty space in here. So it looks like I've got my... Uh, uh, power transformer here, all the circuitry. Um, I don't see anything that looks bad there. Everything looks to be okay. Um, and here's my tape unit itself. So here's my belts. Belts feel pretty good actually. Can't really tell where the belt's at. There it is. Real thin belt. A little bit of play there. Let's put a tape in and see what happens when I tell it to fast forward because that wasn't working. Let's go. So this is fast forward. Oh, not getting anything there. Um, no motion here. 
at all. Let's go ahead and try taking this whole tape unit out and see what happens. I'll start by removing some of the uh, cables here. Let's see, how do these things come out? I thought they were plugs, but maybe not. Let me grab my magnifying glass. Looks like uh, this slides back. There we go. Yeah, these, these little guys are designed to slide back. And then uh, after I slide, slide these connections back, then I can just pull this out. Another thing is the red lead is on the right. So I can try to remember where that placement is. Oh, come on. How do you come out? Not that easy to take apart. How does this thing come off? Yeah, it just pulls out. It goes in, and clamps down. That's all it does. That's it. So it's just a little, little tricky. Just, you know, it just pushes in, and you push this forward, and it locks it. That's it. All right. So I'll take them all out. There, they're all out. How about this one? There's one down here. Disconnect this one. This one's got to be a pain in the ass, I can tell already. So that's loosened up the top. Now I just find the screws at the bottom. Looks like I got one right here, which is going to be difficult to get to. Might need to get a longer screwdriver for this, or take off the uh, circuit board at the bottom here so I can get to that screw. This one over here, that one could probably get to it. That one's a little tight too. Probably going to need a better screwdriver for this job. So I got all the screws out, and of course, the hardest one to get out was right down inside here. Um, and I barely got it out, but it's out. Um, all the cables are out from the top here. There's this cable here that needs to come out as well, but I don't want to pull on it because um, I can't figure out how it loosens. So I'm just going to lift it out gently and we'll see what this tape drive unit looks like from the inside. So just lift it out. There we go. So there we go. Now we've got the entire drive unit. Um, I want to take a look, see if I see any belts. There is a belt back here, but I don't know if that this belt is slipping or not. I can probably clean it up. Uh, maybe that would help. Uh, probably needs to be greased, uh, but I'm not exactly sure what is causing this thing to fail. But we'll try to figure that out. There's my eject button right here. Somehow this pushes. There we go. Yep, that ejects. Very interesting. This tape unit has a head that can rotate. So it probably pushes up against the tape. When it wants to switch directions, like auto reverse, it comes down, it spins the tape around, goes back up, and plays in the opposite direction. And the reason to do that is so that um, your head is magnetized in one direction and it's not. You don't have your tape going forward and then backward over the same head. Um, you can see that the there's a little tiny black part. That's actually the reed head itself. Um, on a cheaper unit, you'd have that on both sides. And when it auto reverse, it just switched the direction and the tape would go in the opposite direction on the head. But on this one, it's designed so that the head is always, uh, the tape is always going the same direction on the head. So I'll disconnect this and then that'll give me a better look at what we've got in the entire drive unit. Okay, so I was able to remove the wire for the little tape head spinning unit. This is uh, pretty tricky because this is very loose. It's just held on by a little bit of plastic and it's got all these ribbons, so I didn't want to do that. So what I ended up doing was taking a screwdriver and just kind of working it in the edge and push prying this up, just pushing it up and then get in here and then pull it up. So that worked all right. So now I should have this free yeah, so the whole thing can come out. So there we go. That's the tape drive unit itself. You can see the uh, the 12 volt DC motor here. Looks like it was uh, manufactured 20 March of 97. Um, so this is not that old of a tape deck. 
um, here's the little wires I was talking about and you can see how loose this is I didn't want to break that so didn't man you know managed to protect that um, let's see here so we got a belt here it's not slipping so the belt itself seems to be tight enough so it'd be kind of nice if it was a belt that'd be easy to replace but it doesn't seem to be just the belt um, so what else could we have going on here possibly a gear let's see here we've got lots of little gears you can see this has gotten some use um, the capstan rollers they're uh, they look like they're well used so this one's seen some mileage in its time uh, a little bit shiny but we can clean that up now I wonder about the gears all the gears are in good shape this is kind of interesting so this little guy just swings back and forth that'd be something interesting to see is how has this been behaving is it moving back and forth the way it should or is it giving us some problems tape would just should just slide in fit in there yep so we got the tape in there you notice it's got all these little tabs these tabs tell the uh, tape deck uh, what type of tape it is now I don't know the locations of the tabs but there's different types of ta uh, metal different types of tapes this one is uh, let's see if it says to max L everyday recording so this is probably like just a um, type A tape nothing nothing fancy it's not a metal tape there we go um, and that would be indicated here this one probably tells it that there's a tape installed right there so I think what I'll do now is um, I could play around I could probably fake it you know pretend I'm putting a tape in there and see if I can get it to play uh, you know why I'm holding it in my hand okay so I found something interesting if I push this tab up here that is telling the deck that a tape has been inserted and if I push fast forward you can see how this little swing this gear on a swing comes over here and hits that gear like, like that but then it it falls off and I can go to the other direction it's doing the same thing okay so that's kind of weird If I hold it, it keeps going. Interesting. So I don't know how it senses when when the tape has hit the end. Something. That's kind of weird. It only goes back a little direct, a little ways, but not the whole way. Let's see what happens. And this is very interesting too. Um, this little guy uses the, the motors and the belt to physically move the head up and down and also rotates the head. There's all kinds of things going on right now. I'm not exactly sure what it's trying to do. <laughs> I think it's uh, it knows that it can't feel friction or something, but it's pretty interesting. Yeah, you can see this is bouncing around. So something's wrong right in here. Don't know if it's missing a spring or what. Stop. Yeah, and it just falls off. Okay. So I gotta figure out why is this not staying the way it should. So it's gonna be hard to see, but I think what's happened is uh this gear on this motor has a very fine crack right about there and that's allowed this to slide back um, so this this is uh, not touching this gear and keeping it in place so I'm going to try to take this gear off and see if I can see that crack a little bit better but I'm pretty sure that's all that's wrong with this uh, with this machine it is a cracked gear Okay, so I had to take it away from the camera for a little while to try to figure out 
exactly how this thing went together and uh, see what the problem was. Um, and one of the first things I noticed, besides the fact that there is a small crack inside the gears, is that uh, the gear itself was missing the uh, it was this the gear on the motor was too low so it wasn't able to drive this second gear here um, so I was able to take a pocket knife and slowly work the gear up um, and I've also went ahead and popped this little guy off so that easily comes out um, exposing the motor here with the gear now if you had to take the motor out it'd be a total pain in the butt because it's got these two screws that hold um, the motor in place but you've got all these assemblies and everything that are all kind of like snapped in or however they're connected and the circuit board is behind the motor so the motor itself isn't going to easily come out and the motor is also soldered onto the circuit board so this would be a real nightmare to try to um, uh, take apart um, so I'm going to leave it all as one now one thing that I noticed uh, when I, I can just temporarily just set this in place is that um, I get a little tension when the um, crack comes around right there is the crack because the, the the teeth are just spread apart ever so slightly now um, you know unfortunately I think Ankyo is pretty much went out of business they were absorbed um, by uh, a couple other companies uh, Sharp and uh, what was the other one uh, Vox I think it was um, and uh, so they're just kind of a name only type company now or at least that's what I understood from the Wikipedia entry I read um, so I don't think you're gonna like buy this replacement part right here from uh, Ankyo um, it is possible maybe I can measure the diameter of the gear I can count the number of teeth and possibly order something uh, it's probably a common part uh, just not sure so there's no there's no numbers on it or anything so I, don't, I have no idea what this gear is called versus this gear versus this gear I don't know so so yeah that's kind of what's going on there now I'm gonna try super gluing the uh, uh, the sprocket back together I highly doubt that's gonna work I'm pretty sure that once I push this uh, gear back in place that's gonna break the uh, the gear open again because there's going to be a lot of pressure put on that gear on that brake so I really doubt it'll work but you know as a, as a as a quick fix I might give it a go another thing I want to do is measure the diameter of it with some dial calipers and count the teeth going around um, because this is something that could be 3d printed if you have a high resolution 3d printer that might be something I do um, or just find a substitute and order it I don't know what these teeth are, or what these gears are made out of. I'm assuming they're probably a nylon for durability. Um, so, so yeah, that's uh, that's what I found. So, let's go ahead. I'm gonna um, stop the tape and make that simple little repair. I intentionally put some super glue on the gear while it was on the spindle because the spindle is kind of holding it, spreading it open. I'll wipe off the spindle so I don't want any super glue on there. Not quite. So let's take a quick measurement. It looks like it's probably a 10 millimeter. Oh, no, that's somewhere around 10 millimeter diameter. So it depends on where you're grabbing it. It says teeth. So it's probably 10 millimeters. I'm just going to go with that. Thickness wise, looks like about three millimeters. So, pretty close to three millimeters. Um, overall thickness is five millimeters. Honestly, I think you could, uh, d you know, put a much wider gear in here, it would not hurt at all. Okay, so I got the gear about where it should belong. It doesn't seemed to have broke but I don't know that crack is still there so it's probably still broke but it's got a good grip I think it'll be okay for now um, don't really understand why they made this gear to where it can 
ride, you know, push up and down so easily, but it does. Um, so the next step is just to push this part back down in there. Um, and it just should just snap into place, but let's see. There we go. Um, and I can put it back together and see if it actually works. Okay, screw it. I'm gonna glue. There we go. Okay, do we have power? Yes, we have power. Can we put the cassette in? Yes. Can we eject it? Yes. Can we fast forward? Yes. Can we rewind? Yes. Can we play it? I can play. I play it the other direction. I can play. Good. Awesome. Okay, so there's only one thing left to do. Okay, there's only one thing left to do, and let's see if this thing plays. So let's pop a tape in. Push play. There we go. She's playing. So in review, I picked up this nice Ankyo cassette deck for the incredible price of free because it wasn't working. Um, after about an, uh, probably tearing it apart, after about an hour, I discovered that really all that was wrong was a gear that pushed its way into, uh, in too far, um, and that didn't allow it to operate correctly. So um, the gear itself has a crack in it. I did use some super glue. Don't know how long that's going to hold, but I do have some measurements. Hopefully, I can find a replacement gear. Um, but I believe that uh, this is going to be a pretty nice deck for, for all of the costs, about an, uh, a dollar, or excuse me, actually no cost at all. Um, I got a nice single deck Ankyo uh, tape cassette player. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, and goodbye.